Hey, another day, another video. And today I wanted to talk about something that has been on my heart for a while. I know a couple of weeks ago I was talking about the greatest tool that we can have, that we can use against narcs, just in general, and that's the inner voice. Listening to it, appreciating it, valuing it, and acting upon it. Not on some crazy, you know, oh, I'm, I'm hearing voices in my head or something like that. Uh, just that, that inner feeling of like, hey, you know, this situation feels great or this situation doesn't feel right. I'm not at peace. I'm going to go. In fact, just this past weekend, I had to have some conversations with uh, some individuals um, about some personal things going on with me that I was not comfortable with. <clears throat> and I had to honor my inner voice and say, hey, look, this ain't it. You may think it is, but it ain't it. And I can tell you the moment that I listened to my inner voice and acted upon it, the, the relief, the sense of relief, the sense of, oh my God, yes. You know, that feeling of gratitude, that feeling of joy flooded in. I'm, I love my inner voice. I love me. For years, I put me down. I have pushed me behind, you know, the bushes. I have dishonored myself and undervalued myself, but not no more. Well, anyway, that, that's the first tool. That's the biggest tool. Listen to your inner voice. Something is off. If you ain't feeling it, you don't got don't go through with it. Period. And I'm talking to somebody now, <clears throat> and only you know what that means. Whether it's a relationship, a job opportunity, um, a move, a career change, whatever. If you're not feeling it, something's in you saying, mm -mm. no. Honor that voice. Honor it. We, according to Judeo-Christian ethics, we have been made in the image of God. We have been, we have the ability to create. Therefore, our words and our thoughts are extremely powerful. Therefore, our inner voice, our inner guiding light, is extremely powerful. It's like a compass points towards the true north. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to go on and talk about another tool that it takes a little bit more work, a little bit more practice, a little more discipline to use. But no matter in what way you, <clears throat> you use it, it will never lead you astray. What tool is that? Well, before I say what it is, let me give you a story. And this was prompted by Narcology and uh, Unscripted, actually, because the other day he was talking about when narcissists gamble with you and with your love. Um, he was talking about how a lot of times folks are looking to get the narc back into their life so they can run a test on them and ensure that they are indeed narcs. I gotta admit, I fell in that trap numerous times. And he said, you know, you don't have to test the narc. Hindsight is your test. And I was like, damn, that's deep. You're right, hindsight is your test. Now, here's the thing. Our memories play tricks on us. Okay? It's it's a widely known fact that we don't remember things exactly the way they are all the time. In fact, there's something called the Mandela effect in which 
things from our youth appear differently as when we're older. For instance, Berestein bears. I could have sworn they were called Berestein or Berestein bears. No, it's Berestein bears or it might be flipped, whatever. Um, that's just one example. That's a Mandela effect, okay? Your mind, as it is constantly processing new information, discarding old information, managing information, memories become corrupted. And even when you replay hindsight and you start checking off the boxes of like, yeah, I was involved with a narc or my family member is a narc or my friend is a narc, you can still miss a lot of clues, right? However, the good thing is there is a way to counteract that. And that's something you can start doing today and do it for the rest of your life. What is that? It's called journaling. Journal. Right. It doesn't matter if you're writing on your phone or writing it on an online journal or writing in a notebook. I, me, I've got like three to four different notebooks that I filled out over the years. I have a couple of uh, you know, online journals, um, <clears throat> I have what? Yeah, I've got that and that. I've got the notebooks. And let me tell you, when everything went, when the tornado came through my life and everything went upside down and the person who I thought was the one turned out to be somebody else's one. And the, when I thought that the world was ending and the black hole was just going to swallow me up and I was done. I look back on my journals. And lo and behold, throughout the years, I was recording little interactions that made me raise an eyebrow. Things that were said, jokes that were made. Little stories that were shared that were like, wait a minute. I remember I wrote in my journal one time. I said... I feel like I'm, I fell in love with the potential and not with the person. There was another time in which I was, I was, I wrote in my journal about a year or so later. I was like, I feel like this person does not see me and that we're more roommates than anything. And I don't know how to come back out of that, but this is the way it is. Like I was journaling, I wasn't aware, I didn't know about devalue, I didn't know about love bombing, I didn't know about discard, I didn't know about hoovering, I didn't know about any of that, yet I was recording and journaling what I was feeling and thinking at the time it was happening. I chalked it up as just regular wear and tear in the relationship. We were having, you know, some money problems. I was in a career transition, you know, I was between jobs for a few months, etc. and so forth. You know, I thought it was just that. No, when I lined up what I know now with what I wrote in my journal, everything is freaking textbook. So do I need to have a narc come back into my life to test him? No. If I ever have a question or a doubt, just look back at my journal. Oh, yeah. August 28th, blah, blah, blah. 3 p.m. Right. Do that starting from today on journal and not just like a dear diary today I went to the doctor and whatever and got my hangnail removed no like journal who are you what are you about what are you trying to do what about the people in your life what do you notice what do you see blah 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 get some journal prompts right 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 not only does that improve your writing abilities right because when you have when you write consistently even if it's like once a week or once every few days it's enough to start getting your vocabulary up, to get your thinking processes going, to start shining lights in your area that there were no lights. You start connecting the dots in ways that weren't connected before because you're journaling. Every successful millionaire or billionaire out there does some kind of journaling. In addition to reading, in addition to ingesting and acting upon what they learn, they are journaling, whether it's a dream journal, whether it's they just waking up and talking about these are the 10 things I want to accomplish today, or this is, this is what I want to accomplish, and this is how I either fail or triumph, blah, blah, blah. They're journaling. They're writing things down. They're recording things. You see, narcs don't live in reality. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand that and say 
A lot of us don't live in reality. Codependents don't, empaths don't. Like, we, most of us are not in reality. But when you record things, when you jot things down, when you say, hmm, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, the person I'm, I, I'm with is saying this, they're doing that, or they're promising this, but they're doing that, and you record it, and you keep an honest law, guarantee when you hold it up to the light of reason and logic, and you say, you know what, this relationship is not... It's not healthy, or this relationship is healthy, and there's some things I need to improve, or there's some things we there's some discussions that need to be had. You're going to be able to determine that based upon what you record. Now, someone's gonna hop in my comments and say, Well, you know, you could be really biased when you're making a journal, and uh, you know, especially if you're a narc, and blah blah blah. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Yes, you can start lying to yourself, all of that. But I guarantee you, if you make a promise to yourself as a either empath, codependent, recovering, narc abuse victim, whatever, say, you know what, I'm going to keep it raw. I'm going to keep it a buck fifty in my in my journal. This is for me only. I'm going to write what I got to say. And the opinions I have today may not hold true or remain the opinions I have tomorrow. And that's okay. I just need to get this down. I need to write this down. I need to record this. I guarantee you, you're going to be able to heal and grow and move forward a lot better and a lot faster than your average Joe Schmo or Jane Bain, right? Write things down, record. This is your time to do that. So in addition to listening to your inner voice, and that's something you probably can journal. You probably should journal. What's your inner voice saying? You woke up today. What are some things you're trying to accomplish? What are some things you're trying to achieve? Okay? Who's in your life? Who's in your inner circle? What's up with them? What are some things you're noticing? Good and bad. Write that down. Because when time comes to make decisions, like I had to do this weekend... I just look back in the journal. Okay, I see this, I see that, I saw this pattern, I saw that. I, we had this conversation and it led to this. Ex okay, now I know how to move. See, when you write things down and you vow to become a student of life, because the pursuit of wisdom is to be a student of life. Okay? Life lessons, not only yours, but life lessons and happenings that happen to other people learn from them when you commit to writing stuff down your retention goes up okay you're retaining the information you're regurgitating it because you're writing it down and then you go out and you apply you strengthen it you strengthen yourself and the added bonus is if a narc comes back to you it's like hey how you doing? <laughs> thought about me? <laughs> you could be like, yeah, I thought about you. I wrote you. I wrote it down in my journal. Nah, we're not getting back together. Nah, you're not breaking no contact. Nah, 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 nah. I know you. I see you. Whenever I doubt myself, I'm going to go back to that notebook, open it up. Yep, this is everything that happened that was unhealthy. Goodbye. Adios. Ciao, ciao right so remember in life you either going through it or you're growing through it journaling is just another tool a very powerful tool very very powerful um, but it's a really good tool to help you to grow and to heal up especially when you're in the beginning stage or at any stage but especially when you're in the beginning stage of getting over a narc and you're dealing with people either who are flying monkeys, talking trash in your ear. You're dealing with your own self-doubt. You're dealing with your own fears, your own worries. Go back to the journal. And I guarantee you, if you start today, start journaling today. And a year from now, when you got to figure some things out, you look back. Or you're trying to see how you've grown. Look back at your journey. You're like, wow, I did grow. Wow, I did learn some things. Oh, man, that was a powerful lesson. 
right? So yeah, that's my Wednesday wisdom. That's my uh, <coughs> that's my tip and quip or whatever. I hope y'all. I hope it helps y'all. Stay blessed. Stay cool. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Okay. Keep keep uh, keep keep six feet apart. All right. We ain't trying to get a try to backslide with COVID. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. See you on the flip side. Ciao.